talking about the sovereignty of God. The sovereignty of God part 2. And we're going to consider Psalms 115 verse 3. For our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he please. Psalms 115 verse 3. But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he, he please. We had made a statement that God does what he pleases only as he pleases. God does things only to please himself. To bring honor and glory to himself. What God does will always bring honor to his name. He makes various things in the Bible for my name's sake. For my name's sake, I will do this. So it's a bring honor to himself. God honor his name. He honor his word. Because God's name speaks about who he is. It speaks about his holiness, his righteousness, his justice, his wisdom. So God's name speaks about the personality of God, his traits, his attributes. There's one thing we can say for certainty. God's word is absolutely his bond. God's word is absolutely himself speaking. God's word represents God in totality. What he has revealed and what he has said and what he has displayed and what he has made known about himself. God cannot deny himself. God will always speak good things about himself. And as his children, we are supposed to speak with the same intent or the same desire or the same motivation or for the same purpose. We should always speak good things about God. We should honor God for his goodness, for his mercy. We should praise and worship him for his grace and his love and for his tender mercies. Our, our speech is supposed to be lifting, uplifting to towards God with an attitude of worship and sincerity. So, and we're supposed to be solemn and sincere. We're supposed to edify his name, glorify his name. Because when we edify God, we edify ourselves. When we uplift his name, we also are brought into that heavenly sphere. We are brought into his presence. Hallelujah. Amen. Isaiah 46 10 states this. So his own words declare, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. He does as he please and I will do all my pleasure. Psalms 125 verse 5 and 6 says this, For I know that the Lord is great and that our Lord is above all gods. Whatsoever the Lord please, that he did in heaven and in earth and in the seas and all the deep places. So because, of, because he is sovereign, as I said, he does as he please. He has done as he please. What pleased him. Now consider that what, when God does anything, it is good. God can only do good. And he said, I know my thoughts towards you. Thoughts of good and not of evil. See, his thoughts are always good. And that should be our, our motto, our, our desire, that the thoughts that we have are good. Because the Bible said that we should supposed to think about whatsoever things that are lovely, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are pure. See, if there be any virtue, and if any praise, think on these things. We're supposed to think on, on good things. Have good thoughts. Because God is pleased with us when we display the right attitude, the right mindset. When we, when we walk according to the Spirit, the dictate of the Spirit. When we acknowledge God, it's, and always acknowledge Him. He directs our path. 
God is pleased to see that his children are walking according to the, to the light. Are walking in the light as he is in the light. Then we have fellowship. He is pleased to have fellowship with us. Because that is his intent. His good intent is to have fellowship with us. To commune with us. To, to, to speak. And we listen and hear. He wants to speak to us. And he wants us to speak back to him. He wants us to magnify him and lift him up. Because when we praise God, we also bring ourselves into, the, into his presence. And, and, and if we are burdened down, if we are troubled, by praising God, all our burdens and our sins are like rolled away. And we begin to have joy and hope. We are not burdened down. We are not stressed out. We relieve of stress. He said, in fact, he says, cast all our care and our burden upon him because he cares for us. God wants want to see us displaying the right attitude. God knows our way. He knows everything about us. Before he acts, before he or she or you acts, or before I ask, he knows. And he answers. Before he, she, you, me, whoever thinks, he knows. He's pleased to help us. Let's consider Daniel 4, 34 to 35. I bless the Most High and praise and honor him who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. He does according to his will in the armies of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. No one can restrain his hand or say to him, What have you done? Now, because I have to confess this, make that statement. None can question God. None can hinder him. He does whatever he wants to do in the armies of heaven and in the armies of the earth. What have you done? Why do you do this? No one can question God. He does as he pleases. Because he's the most high God. He's supreme in all his ways. In his action. and his behavior. Let's also look at Daniel 4, 17. The decision is among, among by messengers. The Holy One declare the verdict to, the, to, the, to that so that the living may know that the most high is sovereign. Over all kingdoms on earth. And give, to, give them to anyone he wishes. And set over them the lowest people. The most high God is sovereign. Over all kingdoms. He's king of kings. He reigns supreme. Sovereign means reign. Dominion. Supremacy. Supreme reign, dominance, supreme power, only power, sole power. He is God. This is our God. There is a son that says, My God, He's an awesome God. He reigns in heaven above, in victory, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. He's awesome. He's, he's mighty and powerful. Who can stand before him? Who can withstand him? Consider also the New Testament verses that, this, that display our states about his sovereignty. Especially Ephesians 1.11. It states that God worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. God works all things after the counsel of his own will. He does Whatever he wills to do. The counsel of his own will. He doesn't need advice. He doesn't need information. Because he's all knowing. He's all powerful. He's just and holy and righteous. So he does things after 
or work things out after it comes of his own will. The word for worketh, energero, E N E R G E O, from which comes the word energy. It, it means that God is active or efficient to work effectually. God doesn't waste energy. God doesn't waste time. He's efficient. He's, he's perfect. He's wise. He doesn't need trial and error methods. He doesn't experiment. He's efficient. He knows exactly what needs to be done. He got all knowledge and all wisdom comes from God. Eyes of him. So he's active. He's active right now. In our lives. He doesn't he does leave us alone. He said, I will never leave you alone. I will never forsake you. He's always by our side. The Holy Spirit is indwelling us right now. He's indwelling the truth of God, the elect of God, the call of God. He's, he's there with us now. He's given us the anointing, the anointing to break the yoke, the anointing, the anointing to, to preach, to teach, to witness. He gives us wisdom and knowledge and understanding. He's there with us to comfort us, to guide. He's there. We should give our life over to him completely. Then to guide us as he sees fit. Not to go our own way. To walk contrary. Or to walk in our, in our own belief. In our own understanding. No, no, no. Let God be God. And if he's God. Serve him. Honor him. Praise him. Worship him. Let him be head. He's the head of the body. His church. He's the head. God will not take second place to anyone. He's sovereign. There's none like him. He will not bow to no one. He will not bring himself low for no one. God will lift us up. He lifts us up. He doesn't condescend to our level. God elevates us to his level. That is his kind intent. That is, that, that's his purpose. God is transcendental. He's beyond. Absolutely beyond or infinitely beyond. But he's also intimate. He means that he's, 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 he's at hand. He's present. He's close by. He's near at hand. He dwells in us to help us, to assist us. But that doesn't mean he's condescending to our level. It just means he, he, he's there to help, to assist, to guide, to strengthen, to deliver. That's why he's there. Romans 11, 26 states, For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. For of him, through him, or to him are all things. Of, by, and for are all things. Why? For his honor and for his glory. Everything is, is, is by him and for him. And to him. All praise and honor belongs to him. All worship belongs to God. Be thankful. Be gracious. Be loving. Because God is pleased to bestow his love upon us. Greater love have no man in this that a man laid down his life for his friends. He laid down his life to pick us up from the depths of sin. To deliver us from the, the bondage of sin. To give us hope. To give us joy. To give us peace. To give us a future. So we're not hopeless. We're standing firm upon the rock Christ Jesus. He's our rock. He's our fortress. He's our strong tower. He's our beginning. He's our ending. He's our first. He's our last. He's our alpha. He's our omega. In him we live and move and have our being. Without him we are nothing. 
So he's supreme in our life. Without him, we have no life. We have no existence. We have no hope. We have no peace. We have no joy. So we stand up and say, thank you, Jesus. That's why we praise him. We say, thank you, Lord, for your holy and righteous, your everlasting, your truth endureth to all generations. Thank you. Hallelujah. Colossians 1, 16. For it, it, it was in him that all things were created, in heaven and on earth, things seen and things unseen, whether thrones, dominion, rulers, or authorities. All things were created and exist through him, and by his service, and intervention, and in and for him. And he himself existed before all things, and in him all things consist and cohere and are held together. All things are held together by the mighty word of power by that was spoken in creation. So when God speaks, it impart faith, it impart wisdom, it imparts knowledge, it imparts joy, it imparts healing, it imparts deliverance, it imparts strength. It imparts hope to us. Without the word of God, as spiritual beings, we are nothing. We will know how to please God. We will know how to worship God. We will know how to pray. We will have, we will have no hope. Paul said we will be like hopeless in this world. We have hope. Because we trust God. We rely upon him. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. See, if God was changeable, like us, we can trust Him. But because He's unchangeable, He's constant. He's fixed. He doesn't move. He doesn't change. Like a shadow of, there's no shadow of turning in Him. Night, day, day, night are like, an eclipse when the sun light is blocked by the moon so that it cannot reach the earth there's an eclipse of the sun because of the moon or sometimes the, the earth blocks the light from the sun to reach the moon and the moon is an eclipse darkness light God is not like that he's light and there's no darkness in him at all so that's what we trust in. He's reliable. See, he's upright. He's sincere. He's faithful and just. And that's, that's how we're supposed to act and behave ourselves. Be faithful. Be just. Be upright. Circumspect in our thinking and our behavior. Let's also look at James 1, 18. Of his own will, he begat us. With the word of truth, that we should be a certain first fruit of his creature. Of his own will, we were regenerated. Of his own will, we were born again. Of his own will, we were redeemed. We were, we were redeemed. Of his own will, we were quickened. Begat means to give birth to, to renew, to regenerate, to bring it, to, to bring to life. Of his own will. Of his own purpose. That, that's power. He willed it. And he desired it. And it is so. It happens. Whatever God will. Or desires. Will happen. Will come to pass. His will. Is his purpose. Enforced by his power. That's God's will. When God wills something. Desires, his power, his wisdom, his holiness is brought into play. And, and it will happen. Something will happen. Hallelujah. So of his own will, he begat us. Not of works that we can boast. It's by his grace that we are saved. 
True faith. We cannot boast and say, I got saved by my own works, by my hands, by my knowledge, by my wisdom, by my, by my wealth. No, it is by grace that we are saved. Not of works. Lest any man should boast. So of his own will, he begat us. Divine sovereignty means that God is God in fact. He's God in fact. Also in deed or in action. As well as in name. That he's on the throne of the universe. Directing all things. Working all things after comes of his own will. He's God in fact. Because he's God also in name. He's God in in purpose, he's God in activity, not just God as an abstract term. God is not abstract. God is real. He's reality. He, in fact, he's the only reality. Every other thing is is, is uh, subjective. Our wisdom and knowledge is subjective. It depends upon circumstances and things around us. Our 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 knowledge is fragmentary. It's controlled by circumstances. What happens, what we see, what we, what we consider, what we know. But God is not like that. God is absolute. He's infinite. He doesn't depend upon anything. Nothing, nothing motivates God or brings about a change in God. God doesn't have to change. He's perfect. He's holy and just. We change. And, and everything we do is dependent upon something else. Is influenced by something else. We are not truly independent, as I said. We are controlled or swayed by things around us. But God is absolutely independent. He's the only independent wise God. The infinite wise God. The absolute holy God. Absolute righteous God. He only is absolute. So that's what it says. He does as he please, working all things after the comfort of his own will. Ephesians 1, 11. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him, who works all things according to the comfort of his own will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. So that is the reason why we are here. To the praise of God's glory. To the glory of his name's sake. See? To bring honor and glory to God. To the praise of God's glory. God, God designed our purpose that he would create. And have, so that he can have a people. So that he can display his love in them. Display his grace in them. To share his love and his grace with. He, he just purposed that he would have a people to share his love with. When God was existing as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, he was pleased to exist in that condition. God is not lacking anything. But God is complete. But the thing you must consider that we were always in Christ. The Bible says that we were hidden in Christ. We were always in God's mind. And it was always his plan and purpose that he would have a people for himself. That he would have a people to worship him. He, was always, he always planned to have a people to live and rear with him. To experience his goodness. To experience his grace. To demonstrate his love. It always was his plan. So, God is complete. We are in him. And he's our God. We're going to just speak one more point. And it's God's holiness. How does God's sovereignty relate to his holiness? God is sovereign, but he's also holy. So God's sovereignty and His holiness. The nature of God is 
depicted three ways in the Bible. God is spirit. John 4, 24. John 4, 24. God is spirit in the highest sense. Because he is spirit, he's incorporeal. He doesn't have a body. Having no vital substance. Vital. Hands and arms and legs and eyes. He's spirit. God fills the whole universe. God is everywhere present at the same time. He's spirit. He's a spirit being. God. And we're speaking about the Father and the Holy Spirit. Jesus himself had to take a body. Whatever the Father is, is expressed in his son Jesus. Because he was given a body. So that we can have fellowship with, 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 with God the Father. We can come near to God. We can experience his goodness. And his mercy and his grace. So this is what John 1, 16 to 18 says. And of his fullness we have all received. And grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth come through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. Because God is spirit, no man has ever seen God at any time. But his Son has declared him unto us. Because he's the only begotten Son. He came from the Father. He came from the bosom of the Father. He was in the presence of the Father. He shares the Father's love and joy to us. So we, we can have fellowship and communion. Also consider Romans 8.29. We shall all be transformed into this image. Into this likeness of His Son. And we know that all things work together for good. To those who love God. To those who are the call according to his purpose. For whom he did foreknow, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the first man among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestine, those he also called. And whom he called, these he also, he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. All things work together for our good. We know that. We are confident in this fact. Because we are the call according to God's purpose. We are the call ones. We are the call out ones. We are the ones that he died for. We are the ones that, that he shed his blood for. We are the ones that he prayed for in John chapter 17. We're the ones that he loves. We're the ones he wants to have fellowship with. He's a, we're the ones that he that he shepherds. Thank you, Jesus. You are spirit and you are life. He says, The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. He's our life this morning. He's our hope, he's our joy, he's our peace. And we, and we know that he's sovereign. And we give him first place in our lives. Have your way with us, Lord. Teach us to number our days. That we will not apply them to evil. But we will apply them to wisdom. Teach us to appreciate the things that you have given us. Guide us, O Lord. Strengthen us. So that whatever we put our hands to do, it will bring joy and pleasure to you. I will be pleasing in your sight. Help us, O oh Lord, to overcome sin and temptations of the wicked one. Not to be consumed by lust. Not to be consumed by anger and hatred and malice. But we will be your object. Your object that displays love and peace, and harmony, and sincerity. Help us, O Lord, to trust you more, to believe you more, to remove all doubt from our hearts and our minds, so that we can really hold fast
to you, Lord. Strengthen our faith. Help us to study your word more, Lord. Bring clarity and understand to our minds and our spirits. Let me read your word. Let your words be with truth and honor and, and peace to us. We thank you, Lord, for your grace. Because without grace, we won't be here today. So may the grace of our Lord, Jesus Christ, may the fellowship from the Holy Spirit, may the love of God continue to dwell with us, continue to walk with us, and help and strengthen us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.